All right, so is everyone uh, ready to get started here? We've got a lot to cover um, in just a short period of time. I will hopefully make this uh, painless and interesting for you all. Um, I'm curious, just a quick raise of hands, how many of you guys are fairly or maybe even quite aware of the kind of work that California Innocence Project does? The number of us, okay. Um, my name is Jeremy Stock, um, Staff Attorney Fellow here at California Innocence Project. You can imagine the types of issues that our clients are dealing with. They've been accused of crimes um, that literally destroy their lives. Um, I sometimes give talks to high school students or to college students. You know, we use examples when they have siblings who have you know accused them of something and their parents buy it. Um, but we can imagine these levels are you know um, so far beyond that. Not only do they lose their professional ability. Um, sometimes their very families turn their backs on them due to the nature of the, the uh, charges. I'm going to tell you a quick story um, about Jennifer Thompson Canino. In this picture, she's 22 years old. She was a college student. She lived by herself. She had gone on a date with her boyfriend. It was a Friday night. Uh, she gets dropped off around 11.30 p.m. or so, says goodbye to her boyfriend. Her boyfriend goes home. She goes into the, her apartment, gets ready for bed, goes to sleep. A couple hours later, she's not sure exactly what time, she's awoken in the middle of the night to find a man next to her on her bed. He proceeds to hold a knife to her throat and rapes her for the next 25, 30 minutes. What's important about this is she's telling herself two things while this is occurring. She's saying, number one, I'm going to do whatever I can do to survive. And number two, I'm going to remember this bastard's face. Right? I am going to remember this guy's face. In the course of her trying to stay alive, she literally convinces this guy, hey, do you mind if I get up and make you a drink? He allows her to. She goes to her kitchen. During this time period, he's kind of meandering around her apartment, looking at photographs, this sort of thing. The light was on in the hallway. In total, she is with this man, she's with her perpetrator for 45 minutes in a fairly well-lit environment. So she has seen him, and the whole time she's telling herself, I'm going to remember this guy. She runs out the back door, frantically going to a house a couple doors down, and she was beyond you know, blessed and amazed to find out you know, they opened the doors, a husband and wife, they brought her in. The perpetrator, believe it or not, went a couple blocks down, committed another rape just a few minutes later. Jennifer goes straight to the police. They, of course, perform a rape kit, um, and she gives a what she believes is a very clear description of her perpetrator to the police. The next day, she looks at a six-pack lineup, and in a six-pack lineup, there's individuals um, who you know may or may not be the culprit, she chooses this guy. What state is this? North Carolina. Okay. His name is Ronald Cotton. And he had lived in the area. And the reason he was on the police's radar is because from his youth, he had had a sexual assault charge. Um, and it turns out it, it wasn't really a thing. It was something he was dating a girl. The parents were upset about it. It was a cross-racial thing, so they charged him, but it never went anywhere. The girl herself never you know, pressed charges. She says there was no issue there, but that didn't matter. Um, so that's why he was in the six-pack lineup to begin with, because he had this record. She chooses him. He gets um, put into a live uh, photo, show up the next day. He's number five. And interesting to note, he's the only person that's repeated. So in the six-pack lineup, there was five other people and Ronald Cotton. The next day, when he's here, um, he's the only person that's repeated. So interestingly, and what we'll be talking about is, why would she be more certain now that it's Ronald Cotton? Right? It's the only face that she has seen now for a second time. She again chooses Ronald Cotton, number five. He is... Charged with a crime, he is put on trial, and he is convicted to a life sentence plus 54 years for this rape. In a turn of events that is sometimes you almost, you know, think the